I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. Today we have Lori Mal Malsberry mm -hmm. from California, who's been willing to come over and share her story. And I'm just thrilled to have you here. And Thank you. Nice to meet you. And so, as we do often, where were you born and what's your background a little bit? Born in Seattle. I have two sisters. We were all born there. Oh. Moved to California when I was about eight. Your dad got a job down a, there or yes, something. Uh -huh. and, yeah. and, and you've been there ever since? I've been there ever since. Oh, a California girl. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I still like Seattle. <laughs> now, were your parents Mormon? No. They went to a Christian church, but I they never talked about faith or I never saw a Bible. Oh, really? And I think they just joined the church, or they didn't join, they went because they liked to sing in the choir. What so church I, did they go to? It was called Church of Christ oh, in okay. Los Angeles. And I see. So I would just sit in the front row and look at them. <laughs> I just thought that was great. <laughs> but um, I heard the, the message. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, kind of grow up then, I guess you'd call a Christian. And then you, did you, when did you run into Mormonism? When I was in college, oh, I wow. met a guy and we dated and he mentioned that he would never marry a girl that wasn't Mormon. And so I didn't know what Mormonism was, but I thought I could do that. So I looked in the yellow pages, if you can believe that one, and got the name of the church and said, how do I find out about this? And the next morning so I had two, two missionaries, missionaries at my door. Well, now you're, you're eventually a husband, right? You, you do marry him. I did marry him. We had a child and then a he child. left. Oh. Okay, we'll yeah. get to that in a second. But did you, so when you, the missionary showed up, did mm -hmm. they, did he come with them? No. Or did, did you do this? No, I did your... this as a surprise because I oh. wanted to marry him. <laughs> and he said, I, I can't marry somebody that's not, yes. not a Mormon. Oh, okay. So, so I said, well, I can do that. So what was the process of the missionaries? Did they start teaching you? They taught me the lessons. It's been so long ago. I don't remember even listening, and I don't think I did very much, and I just knew the end result that I wanted to get to married. Bab so Get baptized so that you'd get... Yes, kids. which is a silly way to do it, but that's what I did. Yeah. And I didn't really understand what they were talking about, but it sounded wonderful because they liked families, yeah. they liked kids, they seemed like nice people, and they talked about Jesus. So oh. I thought, this is okay. Okay. So your husband to be was happy about that, I guess. And yes. was he surprised? Yes, he was surprised and it worked. <laughs> and it worked and you got married. <laughs> right. Now, did you, you didn't marry in the temple then ever? No. Was we, he active then or? I mean, he was semi-active. It was the Hollywood ward actually. Really? In Hollywood. Okay. Anyhow, we were married in a ward. Yeah. We did not go to the temple because he didn't live by the doctrines. And he and didn't yet he have wanted a wanted you to be a Mormon. Yes. <laughs> Interesting. So that's and then we did go to church and I was part of the Maya maids and leading music and yeah. various jobs. Did he have any callings? Did he go to he, church? Yes, he went we went every Sunday and he would work with the like junior high high school kids. Oh the scouts. The maybe? scouts, okay. yeah, he liked that. I understand you taught Relief Society. 13 years, and Is that right? I enjoyed the teaching very much. Yeah. So do you feel like you had a testimony of the church? I mean, you said you didn't no. really understand it going from the missionary point of or no. during that process, but did you finally learn more about the church and gain yes. a testimony? Well, I got a testimony. I don't think it would be called gain <laughs> because I mimicked what other people said like a puppet. 
and I really so said what you thought they wanted to hear. <laughs> that's right. And so I would get up once in a while and give my quote testimony, but I didn't really think about it, and I wasn't deep into it. Now, teaching Relief Society for 13 years, <laughs> and you really don't feel like you had a testimony. How does that work? <laughs> I love teaching. Yeah. <laughs> I love the women. They gave me a workbook, and I would just go through the workbook every lesson, but I only used the Bible as scripture. Oh, really? I never used Doctrine and Covenants or the Book of Mormon, and and no one ever questioned me, and I never thought about it at the time. I just felt more comfortable using the Bible. Well, coming out of Christianity the way you did, what did you understand of who, who was Jesus to you then, if you can remember back, and what yeah. oh, grace and those kinds of things? Do you, do you remember kind of your Christian background? Yes. When I was like nine, I did accept the Lord in this, Christian, this Church of Christ, and really? I was baptized. And so I knew who Jesus was. He was my Savior. I loved him. I believed in prayer. And I really believe from that time on that God was protecting me. Wow. What, what happened at age nine? You were... I was just excited. The pastor just looked at me during a sermon and gave the invitation and said, would you like Jesus to be in your heart? And I just looked back at him and I said, Yes, I would. And so he said, well, come on up here. And they baptized me, right? You know, they had a little baptismal font. And, that, and they did it right yeah. then. Now, you were singing a song or something. Did you, do I remembering this correctly? You had some experience? and. Well, my mother liked uh, the song, I don't even remember, the, In the Garden Alone. I oh. Come to the Garden Alone. Yeah. And I love that song. I don't know what you're referring oh, to okay. about. Well, I'll song. look at it maybe in a second. But oh, did you, okay. what did you understand about grace and what Jesus had done for us? Did you kind of have that concept as a yes. young person? I understood that he died for me and I believed in that. And it was, I don't know why I just shoved all the Mormon information away. But when even the missionaries, when they were talking to me, they were talking about Joseph Smith and Book of Mormon. And I just thought, Okay, but I never absorbed it, and I ignored it, yeah. and I just held on to, I believed in God and Jesus, and there, then there were some things that I listened to in the Mormon church, like there were three gods, you know, yeah. Jesus, a Father, God, and the Holy Spirit, right. or Holy Ghost. Three separate, yeah. But I never, I never it, so that confused me. <laughs> but I never really looked into it. I don't know how I taught for 13 years. Well, that's what I, I want to get back to that because it's so <laughs> yeah. interesting that you could. Yeah. Uh, now, I know most of these lessons are topic driven. They are. So they're about charity and yeah. about temple work mm -hmm. and doing visiting teaching or whatever mm -hmm. and being kind and to I neighbor. A, and so you were able right. to give lessons. I just read just the could, lesson and gave the information. <laughs> But you didn't like using the Book of Mormon no. Doctrine and Covenants, just the Bible. No, and I never realized that, that I was being that? protected until <laughs> after. Oh. When yeah. I came out of Mormonism, and it, I, I woke up and I thought, wow, that's interesting. <laughs> oh, boy. So your husband leaves, you mentioned. Yes. And then do you continue being active in the church? Yes, we had a little boy, and I brought him up in the Mormon church. Mm -hmm. And so he went through seminary and everything and then later when he was like 20 or so he my second husband was a strong christian well that's okay. and so david my son listened to him thank goodness <laughs> and then on his own he said i don't want to be a mormon i uh -huh. want to follow christ like dad he called him dad yeah and he did well when you came when you started dating, I guess, your your second husband, mm -hmm. did did you expect to marry a Mormon at this point? Or not well, dating no. him because he was a Christian, but were oh. you looking for a Mormon no. to marry? No, I just was looking for a nice guy that would love my <laughs> me and love my son. <laughs> I see. <laughs> so but he it was, was a good Christian. What did he say about your Mormonism? He didn't know what Mormonism was either. Did he let you go to church? Well, going? that we had war on Sunday because he would go to his church and I would go to my church. Really? And then we'd come home and argue <laughs> every Sunday. 
Yeah. But pretty soon we had three children together. And when he st wanted to take them to church, I said, well, I want to be with you and the family because I had agreed with my husband then that I would not bring my children up Mormon. Oh. And so he went to church with them, and I said, I want to be with you. So I went to both churches. Oh, so I'd okay. go with them, and then I'd come home and, and go to the Mormon, Mormon church. church. Now, yeah. eventually you talked to the bishop about things that you were hearing in the Christian church, right? Yes. What did What did the bishop say? He said, don't ask questions. He said, we're the authority. We know what is correct. And that's the truth. And so you don't have to worry about that. Don't ask questions. Just do what we say and you'll be fine. But then I would go over to my husband's church. And as I continued going, I met a lot of people. Yeah. And I would ask them questions and they would answer me. So the, the <laughs> scales were like this for Mormonism was up here. And then pretty soon... <laughs> They, they would tip, and then that's when I left the Mormon church. Oh, and did you, uh, what was, was that hard on your kids, or? No, they did, were. Were they older enough to? Um, they were like junior high. No, they didn't, they just went along with whatever I did. I did influence my daughter too much, and she is a Mormon now. Oh, okay. And married a Mormon guy in the temple. In the temple. Yeah. So that's too bad. But the other ones were Christian. Have you been able to share with her much? A little bit, but um, the door is pretty closed. Yeah. Would you do anything differently in dealing with her? Or I know your sister's also Yeah, my Mormon. sister is. She yeah. actually became a, a LDS uh, in a totally separate situation, right? From yeah, she joined in high school too. And she works in the Salt Lake Temple for genealogy oh, yeah. right now. In the family history she loves department it. or something. Yeah. Well, in the genealogy. Oh, I don't okay. know what all exactly, but yeah. she's very devout and, and she's very hard to talk to. I was going to ask if you've been able to talk to her either. I recently asked her a question. I was praying to God. I said, God, <laughs> can you just give me a question that wouldn't be threatening? But would make her think a little yeah, bit. That, yeah, and so I asked her because her husband had died some years ago oh. of cancer. And so I asked her, do you think Jerry, oh, I know, I was reading a book called Imagine Heaven, which was a wonderful book, Christian. And so I mentioned that to her, and I said, what do you think of heaven? And she said, oh, it's great, that's where I'm going. And I said, do you really believe that your husband is a god of his own planet and that he will call you up you asked her that <laughs> and she was very surprised and all she asked she hadn't thought about that maybe no and she just said do you know that everything's going to be okay and we're all going to be fine and then she changed the subject so she wouldn't talk about it but she wouldn't answer me yeah. so i was hoping that she would look into that but i don't know if she has I don't think she'll bring the subject up to me. Well, during the time you were LDS, did you were you able to talk much about religion with like your sister and your daughter and so on? My daughter, apparently, like you, yes, because you know, I would make different comments against the Christian church and dad. <laughs> and, you know, I was for the, the LDS church. And eventually she, in high school, dated a Mormon boy and that's when and when she turned 18 she said I'm going to become a Mormon and I said you can't do that because I had just come out of it oh. and she was going in and I said you you can't do this and I was trying to talk to her and she said I'm going to be 18 in a few months I'm an adult just and so. I'll do what I want and she did uh, and so it's been tough with with the them it has so. but we have a very loving family situation and but they won't talk about religion yeah. to me kind of in the same situation we With have love and we have love and respect yeah. for each other and right. we have their backgrounds and everything mm -hmm. but to talk about certain things is just yeah. and you do pray for questions that you can ask them right? i do you know yes way that we can yeah i want to be gentle about it that that last question i gave her wasn't very gentle but it just 
I had prayed for the Holy Spirit yeah. to give me a question, and that's what came out. So I thought, well, that's yeah, interesting. That's what God wants, yeah. how to plant a seed. Right. So going to the Christian church with your uh, husband. second husband, your mm -hmm. husband, that was, did you sense of uh, uh, more more God in there and Jesus? or? Oh, absolutely. I got... In the Bible, it talks about being hungry and that we will be fed, yeah. and I was. I got accidentally, but it really wasn't an accident, on Christian radio, and I would listen an hour a day to these pastors with their message. And the funny part was, at the end of each little program, they would, the pastor would give an invitation, and I'd be driving to work listening to this, and so every day I would accept the Lord, not realizing <laughs> that once was enough. <laughs> Gee, that's okay. I accept again. Huh? Right. And so I was hungry. Yeah. And then I read the scripture about becoming mature in the faith. Yeah. And I thought, boy, I'm so immature. I really want that. And so that helped me. And then I joined Bible studies and it just grew and grew. And you just can't get enough. Right. right? Yeah. And I didn't ever sense that. I know mine was 65 years in the church, oh. and yours at least 21. 21. Oh, actually 28. 21 with my first husband. He prayed for me for 21 years to come out of Mormonism. It took that long. Your second husband? My second husband. Prayed that long. 21 years. That's patience. And, and we were married 47 years, so yeah. we had some good years <laughs> together. But he was he like... He prayed and that you'd come to understand yeah. and... Uh-huh. And I was going to his church then. Yeah. But, well, it, but we don't sense that, I don't know, it's just so different. I don't know, there's not a hunger and a thirsting mm -hmm. for Jesus and the Bible and in oh, the LDS no. church, even though they carry the Bible to church every Sunday. Well, they had, they had a portion of the year that they would, quote, study the Bible. But as I look back, they would just take certain verses and put their own spin on it and not right. read before and after. You need to read the whole yeah. story to, to really know the, what it's saying instead yeah. of taking a portion out and claiming that one. <laughs> now, you mentioned you started listening to Christian radio and some books. That mm -hmm. Were there any books in particular that you... Well, that Experiencing Heaven, but I think when I joined Bible studies, they would do studied John and oh, Matthew and Bible. Ephesians and my very favorite life verses from Ephesians about needing the power of the Holy Spirit that we can't do anything on our own and I really believe that. Did you ever get that message as a Mormon? No. I just got Joseph Smith, Brigham Young. <laughs> I just got the little stories from them so I never got any Christian information. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so interesting that, uh, and now we have these families that are divided, so yeah. to speak, and they're, and they're unwilling to really listen. And yeah. they know, I don't even know, do you know if they know about the essays that the church has written? Do you know about those? What and, essays are you talking, you like the magazines Well, the church has uh, issued some essays now about oh. 13 or 14 different topics mm -hmm. about uh, Joseph Smith's polygamy and... No, I Abraham. didn't even know about that. I don't know about, okay. <laughs> well, anyway, they're, they're just different topics, and uh -huh. they're in the LDS website. And uh -huh. I, I like to ask Mormons if, if they're mm. aware of them, and generally they say no. And then, of course, yeah. my follow-up question is, okay, you're aware of them, mm -hmm. if they do, are. Have you read them? And, right. of course, I don't even usually get to that because they don't mm -hmm. know about them either. They yeah. bury them, but I think it's their way of kind of, I guess the word's been inoculate the, the youth, right. so to speak, so that they can say, we've always talked about these issues, but... Uh, well, I have read some information about the LDS Church on the website yeah. from the Christian point of view, yeah. and it was very interesting hearing some of the things about Joseph Smith, and I think it was Brigham Young that gave a message and said that you can't even get into heaven without Joseph Smith okaying it. Right. And I thought, whoa, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> was that so, as a Christian you read that or yes. back as a Mormon? Yes, no, it is a Christian. They don't teach that as a, no. usually in the missionary lessons. <laughs> no, and they don't talk about 
the three heavens and you know and I know there's only one and yeah. it's just interesting in how Jesus had wives and of course Christians don't believe that I mean, that he no. was not married but so some, some of the information was quite interesting well do you uh, have you I know we pray about this but how would how what do you think the best way to approach a a family member would be well I've been thinking about, about that, that because yeah. of my daughter and my sister and other people I think I need to and I have started writing down a list of questions that are open-ended like what do you think of heaven or how do you think you'll get there or who is Jesus to you I want it to be gentle but to have them start thinking because I think asking questions is the key that's the key to think. open the door because that was the key for me yeah that because i was told not to question and then when i did start questioning that opened the door and then i was hungry that was strange for the bishop to say that don't ask questions and we have the authority and that's all you need to know that's and, right yeah and then going over to my husband's church and they were very open and loving and it was just a different <laughs> atmosphere totally uh, well I, you know it's hard to explain to to people especially in the church because I think Mormons believe they're Christian right? well they do my sister comments on that all the time well we're Christian because we believe the same thing you do well when this was some years ago that she mentioned that and now I could answer that by saying no they don't believe the same way there's only one God there's you don't get to heaven through works it needs to be faith yeah. but they think it's grace with their works right. anyway I now I would have a better answer but before <laughs> I didn't well I think that and that's what I I think I've done things poorly as well yeah. I wish even when I was studying my way out of the church I mm -hmm. I wished I'd have talked to my children mm -hmm. and uh, yes. more so and, and just brought them yeah. along because I wouldn't have been a threat to them at that mm -hmm. point it would have been just <clears throat> of course they would have wondered why I was looking at this stuff but you know just to explain right you know. it would be interesting there's one question that I would like to ask is about God or Jesus I guess God for them uh, was a man before he became God and that the Mormons if they do everything they're supposed to do and follow the church doctrines they can get their own planet and they can be their own God and that is what I'd like to ask them do they really believe that or how does that happen well that's the whole thing it, it's and and I never put the words to it this way that he was a sinful man oh I is that what they say? I well, didn't hear no, that one. Well, no, they don't ever say that. Mormons oh. don't say that, but oh. I'm saying as a Christian now, I'm thinking oh. not only was he just a man on another earth, because Jesus, we believe, and Mormons believe that yeah. he was perfect. Uh -huh. So not it's not just the Jesuses of the world that become gods. Oh. It's even me, that oh, I could yeah. become a god. Well, I know I'm a sinful person, and I right. know that my heavenly father according to mormonism mm -hmm. had to have been a sinful man on another planet right and i don't think they really think of that because god know. is the same yesterday today and forever but that's in the bible and, and the book of mormon actually teaches that oh, too does it? yeah that god's never yeah. he's ever never changing yeah. that he's the same and uh, so i don't know it's the it's the doctrine, the theology of Mormonism mm -hmm. that kind of binds them up once in a while. You mentioned about Jesus being married. Uh -huh. Well, Jesus has to be married in Mormonism to become a god. He has to go oh, through the temple. Yeah. And I think Mormons believe that he has to be, mm -hmm. is, he has to be baptized into the church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, he has yeah. to hold this priesthood that uh, right. is never ending. They believe priesthood right. was before God. I think yes. that a lot of Mormons don't know some of the basic theology of their own religion. I think you're right. Uh, you know, just for the baptism part, or yeah. I, I lost my train of thought there, well, what I, it was. I, but... I actually asked my daughter-in-law, mm -hmm. I probably shouldn't even say that much, but I do, <laughs> I have a couple of daughter-in-laws, so it's, I just said, have you read the LDS essays? 
And she oh. said, I know what I believe. I already know what I believe. Yeah. Why do I need to read those? Right. Even though the church is trying to be more, a little more transparent about some of these things that in the past people were being excommunicated for because they were talked about mm -hmm. Joseph Smith marrying other men's wives mm -hmm. and the book of Abraham having, and the facsimiles there, having problems and stuff. Mm -hmm. But if they really knew their doctrine, it talks about two churches. They're even, it's either the LDS church or the church of the devil. Uh -huh. And if you don't belong to the Mormon church, then you're in the devil's church, and that's where I am. Yeah, yeah. I mean, according to them. According to them. Right. I and I don't think a lot of Mormons think about that or realize that. Yeah. And, well, they, they believe that you have to become a Mormon. Right, but I don't think they think at the part of the church of the devil. Oh. That the rest of us are, are part of Satan's church. I mean, that's scary. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. It puts us in a kind of an awkward position. It does. Well, Laurie, thanks so much for coming. We're almost out of time. Mm. I know you've got family in, mm. in the church, as we've mentioned. What, what would you like to say to them if, if they'd ever listened to this program? I would say, please ask questions. I mean, do you really know your faith? Do you really understand the doctrines have you ever read anything else and to have an open mind and I just think the questioning or questions for them is the way to go and I would like just to say please be open and yeah. I'm praying for you yeah can I pray for you I would and pray right then <laughs> yeah that is wonderful for people and to have an understanding too of of who Jesus is yeah. and what he did for us that we couldn't do for ourselves mm -hmm. I think Mormons don't think of themselves as sinners. I know they no. think they're not perfect, yes. but they don't really think of, 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 of Jesus, what he did, and completely took, took care of everything. And, mm -hmm. and like you say, they feel like they need to work. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, yes. I remember hearing somebody speak once, and they were talking about the stairway to heaven, and it was works. Yeah. And I always, that probably was... 40 years ago that I heard that, and I still remember that stairway to heaven. I thought, oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is how, what I have to do to get right. there. And they do. They're always working. Yeah. And they serve. And it's beautiful, and it's wonderful. wonderful. I mean, they, And we love them. Right. Yeah. My daughter lives in Houston, and they help so many people with the flooded houses mm -hmm. and everything, and, and that's part of their love. Well, Lori, thanks so much. Appreciate okay. you coming all the way from California. And yeah and uh, sharing your story well, with us. And You're welcome. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and we'll see you next time.